it was at this moment that he knew. Damn, son, where'd you find this? So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! You are now listening to the world's most popular, inaccurate, and sometimes squirrel retelling of pop culture history. It's Podcast 42 on the Podfix Network. Sunny days sweeping the clouds away On my way to where the air is safe Laura, I told you I should drive. Laura always drives. Otherwise, she throws up. Oh, that sounds fun. Well, it's not. I hate driving, and it's not my fault, you guys. You know, Google Maps is so messed up. Hey, look over there. There's a guy or a thing, a green furry thing by the trash can. Ask them, Laura. You you like furries, remember? Are you crazy? I never said I like furries. <laughs> you are going to flood my emails with all these weird requests, Chris. <laughs> I cannot believe you would say <laughs> I like furries. You mean more yeah. weird requests than you already get? <laughs> Just really weird requests I won't ever, ever fulfill. Seriously. <laughs> Plus, we don't know this neighborhood, and you want me to ask some creep who appears to actually be living inside that trash can? For directions? Well, yeah. Seems like he would know the area. He's always there. (laughs) At least he isn't magenta or orange. What difference does that make? Nothing really, except he might have been magenta and concept drawings and orange the first season. He most likely only knows the inside of that trash can, guys. Actually, I'm still orange. If I ever took a bath, you would see this is mold and moss that got stuck on me when I visited Swamp Mushy Muddy. Well, that's interesting and gross. But on this sunny day, we've been sweeping the clouds away. Could you tell us how to get to Sesame Street? Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Are you kidding me? Is that some kind of joke? No, it's some kind of podcast. Wait, I know you. You're Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, what's it to you? We're trying to find Sesame to record a show on its history. Well, you almost found it. Now scram. You're upsetting my wormy. Hey, there's a pet worm, guys. This guy's legit. You know what's funny? Is that you asked Oscar the Grouch... How to get to Sesame Street. How to get to Sesame Street. Like the song? Hello? Am I the only one getting the connection? Yeah, I get it. I get it, Sabrina. Trust me. It's engraved. I got it. We all get it. We all get it. I don't understand. All of us get it but Chris, but that's normal. (laughs) She gets to plug on the computer half the time. (laughs) But, uh, hey, Oscar, do they sell beer on Sesame Street? Definitely not. We're a kids, children show, all that stuff. Always have been since 1969. And by the way, your little cutesy joke about how to get there. Guess what? That line almost didn't even make it in the song. The producers hated the lyrics to the song. They called it trite and cliche. Isn't that right, Warmy? Weird, because that song is iconic. Well, Bruce Hart wrote the lyrics and almost had to write them again. But it was too late. So they went with that wee willy winter singers to sing it and, uh, you know, whatever. The rest is history. Sunny, sunny day. Chris, Chris, please don't sing. Yeah, Chris, please don't sing. You know, I also once read that the children's television workshop, none of us want to hear it. Not even Oscar. Oh, boy. Anyways, I once read that the children's television workshop, the company behind the show, used to receive security blankets from all the children that didn't need them anymore. Thanks to the show. Yeah. Probably, but all I need is my trash can and my warmy, and I don't need anything else. By the way, I'm going to be featured on an upcoming episode of Hoarders, so be looking for that. The person you need to find is uh, Joan Gantz uh, Clooney. Who's that? That's for me to know and you to find out. Goodbye. She's over there, by the way. Goodbye. I like him. Joan. Joan. 
Oh, hello. Who are you? I'm Laura. Hi. This is Chris, JL, and Sabrina. Are you looking for something? And what's with the microphones? Oh, uh, we're a podcast. Interesting. Doesn't everyone have one of those these days? I thought you podcast types record it in a dark, dark closet somewhere. We're out of beer. So we're on a beer run slash uh, research trip slash uh, mostly beer run. And Oscar the Grouch told us that we should talk to you. Can you tell us how to get to Sesame Street? How to get to Sesame Street. Well, guess what? I like to guess things. Let me see. Let me see. Um, you're really a man. Oh, no, no, no. Let me guess. Um, you really like uh, meatball subs. A man turned woman who likes meatball subs. Ooh, good one. Thanks. Guys, let her talk. I'm the co-founder of Sesame Street. Whoa. You founded a street? Wish I could have founded a street. There has to be a way to found a street. There's so many. I'm thinking you just randomly found them somehow. Makes sense. Oh my goodness, boys. Can we just please focus? I found a street. <sighs> Seriously, will you stop? I'm just pointing at another <clears throat> street. L- would you stop? L- listen, Joan, how did you found it? A- oh, great, now they've got me do it. How did you create... Sesame Street. Well, one day I noticed that my daughter was sitting in front of the TV, but she was just watching the test pattern. That's weird. She was probably talking to a poltergeist. Oh, I wish. Instead, she was waiting for Saturday morning cartoons to come on. At that time, all cartoons really taught was violence. At least the poltergeist would have taught her something. Yeah, like uh, how to live inside a TV and how to make a clown doll strangle your brother. Or how not to build your house on an indigenous people's burial ground. Way to be 2019 on the verbiage jail. Thank you. Practicing. Guys, please, Joan, continue. What happened next? Over the next couple of years, we got funding from the Carnegie Corporation, the Ford Foundation, and the U.S. Department of Education so that we could create a show for kids, but also one that might appeal to adults as well. Like Rick and Morty. No, definitely opposite from Rick and Morty. (laughs) More like Ren and Stimpy. I was thinking CSI, SVU. I I wasn't really thinking that, but Sesame Street is about learning letters, so I just threw out a bunch of letters. Okay, then. Well, eventually, (sighs) Dave Cornell came aboard. He was working on the kids' show Captain Kangaroo. I used to watch the spinoff, Captain Caveman. I'm ignoring you now. And finally, Jim Henson, who had a Muppet named Kermit the Frog that he brought with him. Never heard of him. He has, Joan. He's just being jail. Hi, ho. Kermit the Frog here. Uh, jail. Have you never heard of me? No, I've heard of you, Kermit. Like Laura said, I was just being jail. Kermit, I love you. Don't tell Miss Piggy. Hi, Kermit. We were just discussing Sesame Street. That's where I got my start. I was Sesame Street's... Every frog and also the -the on-the-scene TV reporter. I remember you would interrupt with an urgent news flash. Yeah, and you interviewed a London frog while wearing a London fog raincoat in a London fog... fog. You could say I was uh, Sesame Street's first breakout star. So before we went to air, we test screened the show to children. They told us what they liked or didn't like, and also what they learned. And then we just tweaked it from there. Our show was coming out at a good time, too. The government was cracking down on cartoon violence and what children watch. It was determined that the average child watched five to seven hours each weekday and that a lot of what they were watching had up to 20 violent acts in them. Man, she's really harping on that cartoon violence. Back in 1969, a lot of schools did not have preschool or kindergarten. This was a fun way to start a kid's education. Hey, Kermit, can I touch your head? Uh, it's a weird request, but I'll allow it. Ooh, it's so felty. Can I lick it? We also wanted to do the show without commercials. Those toy and sugar cereal commercials were just as bad as the cartoons. I love cereal commercials. Honeycomb's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris, please stop. Please, it's not please stop. Stop. No, no, no. No. Why is it called Sesame Street? To Sesame Street. It was, uh, it was going to be called 123 Avenue B. But guess what? There's a real address in Manhattan. Go figure. That's crazy. I once read that set designer Charles Rosen based the Sesame Street set on an amalgam of streets in Harlem, the Bronx, and the Upper West Side. Interesting. Where did uh, where did you read that, Sabrina? Oh, on on the back of a cheese it's box. The name is actually based on Aladdin. I get it, because all the Muppets wear turbans. No, it's because it's like open sesame, like you're opening up kids' minds. Very good, JL. And all the characters wear turbans. No one wore turbans. Okay, well, all this craziness. I have to go to a meeting. Nice talking to you all. Oh, 
She's leaving, and we're not any closer to finding Sesame Street. On my way. Maybe you can help us, Kermit. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, I did used to work here and all, but, uh, but it's been a while. Uh, let's see. It's the, uh, way, no, uh. Hey, look. Maybe it's Kermit. This- There's a bunch of multi-diverse people milling around over here. I once read that because of the diversity of the cast, the show wasn't even aired in some states like Mississippi because, you know, racism. <laughs> Oh, where'd you read that, Sabrina? Uh, it was on the back of a shampoo bottle. Well, uh, that's weird. Uh, let me introduce you. Uh, that's Gordon, the school teacher, and Bob, the music teacher. I also see uh, Susan, the nurse. Uh, she's married to Gordon, by the way. And there is Lewis, the owner of the fix-it shop, and Mr. Hooper, too. He owns the corner store. Corner stores sell beer. Or they might sell corners. Hello. Uh, hello, Gordon. Uh, we're looking for Sesame Street. Sesame Street? Sesame Street. You never seen a street like Sesame Street? Everything happens here. You're going to love it. So we're here? Yes. Mr. Hooper, I just want to say that I love your corner store, and I think that the message that you give kids about how the young and the old should talk to each other is inspirational. Why is this strange Muppet talking to me? Oh, it's okay, Mr. Hooper. You'll have to forgive him. He's getting a little senile. He was 69 when, years old when the show started. But wait a minute. That would make him... Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do the math. Why are you all holding microphones? Are they some kind of new old-fashioned hooligans, huh? No, we're podcasters. Pod whaters? Podcasters, like AM radio, but interesting. I love my radio. I married my radio in 1912, back when it was still legal. Like I said, Mr. Hooper old. <laughs> yeah, like Dr. Who old. Uh, we're looking for research information about the show. Anything interesting you can tell us? Yes. Sesame Street was instantly popular when it aired that first year. The big show at the time was Rowan and Martin's Laughing. This show was a variety show with quick bits and quotable catchphrases. Sesame was like that too, only for everyone, whereas Laughing was more for adults. I once heard that Artie Johnson from Laughing guest starred on Sesame Street. It's true. He did a bit on why Q is the laziest letter. Why? Because it can't work without you. Oh, I get it. Because I personally can't work without my supply of gummy bears. Truth. Yeah. Now now everyone at work also needs my supply of gummy bears. Now Sesame Street had regular bits too. Like, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things is not like the others. Nicole. And the bad painter who painted numbers where they didn't belong. Like on Nicole. The actor who played the mad painter ended up being the butler on the Jeffersons. I love the Jeffersons. Wheezy, I'm coming to join you. That was Sanford and son, Honky. <laughs> Elizabeth was Red Fox's wife. Wheezy was George's wife. Oh, yeah. Wasn't Big Bird on the cover of Time magazine that year? Yes, and we had an album out that year, too. It had songs on it like being green, I love trash, and somebody come and play. Don't forget my number one hit, Rubber Ducky. Ernie! Where's Bert? Oh, uh, Bert, Bert's busy. Uh, he'll be by later. He is back in our one-bedroom ap- basement apartment filling out some paperwork to get me on his health insurance. Oh, wait. Like a uh, domestic partner? <laughs> well, not exotic partners. <laughs> Jim Henson helped me sing Rubber Ducky, by the way. It reached all the way to number 16, just under close to you by the Carpenters. And it sold over a million copies. Sesame Street has only been on the air 10 months at this time. So it's a crazy accomplishment. Even Cher couldn't accomplish that. Hi, Bert. Squidward? (laughs) (laughs) Didn't realize you were... You were... On Sesame Street? (laughs) The part of Bert will now be played by Laura. Guess what, guys? Bert's still busy filling out paperwork. (laughs) Even Cher couldn't accomplish that. Hi, Bert. Oh, uh, hey, Bert. Did you get everything done that you had to do? Most of it. Don't forget, we have tickets to Hedwig and the Angry Inch tonight, so don't spend all day in the bath. I like it when Bert interrupts my baths. That's, uh, quite an interesting choice of musicals, guys. Oh, uh, Bert picked it. I wanted to see Rent. Yep, 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 guys, it's the yip yips. These guys make me happy. Hi. Yip, 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 yip. Hi. Yip, yip, yip. Hi. Yip, 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 Hi. Hi. Yip, 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 They don't make me happy anymore. I don't like them. Did anyone else notice that these buildings are not really buildings? They're just fronts. Oh, they be fronting. Hey, look over there. It's Big Bird and Mr. Snuffleupagus. Hey, JL. Big Bird just said, hey, JL. Hey, JL. Mr. Snuffleupagus just. We get it. Mr. Snuffleupagus just said hi. I.